Make sure that indeed it's a scripture from God. Yeah, so we have to critically reason whatever the scripture says to make sure we accept that scripture is from God. Otherwise, you can believe in any scripture by blind faith, right? Hmm? Reason, okay. So if a scripture says God put a rainbow in the sky so that he can be reminded of a covenant that he made, is that reasonable? Description of God's knowledge and his attributes. So if we read that in Genesis, which is correct, that God puts a rainbow to remind him, not to remind us, but to remind him, would that be a reasonable description that this is talking about God in his real attributes or this is a false information about God? You can read it. It says clearly God puts a rainbow and he says, whenever I look at the clouds and I see the rainbow, it will remind me. I will remember. Does God need reminding by rainbow? The answer is no. God doesn't need reminding. I'm not a Christian, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. So God doesn't need reminding by anyone because he doesn't forget. So when we read something in the scripture and we use reason and we see that scripture says God needs reminded reminding by a rainbow, we know that scripture gives false information about God. No, no, if, if you read it, if you read it, and we can open up the Bible now if we want and we can read it. If you read and it says clearly that God puts a rainbow in the sky to remind him about a covenant that he makes or made that in the future. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll bring this up for you, you can read it. I can bring the King James Version, it's not a problem. So, let's go to the Focus Bible. Let me see if I have King James in there. Can I put on you? Can I put on you? Why are you making all these issues, brother? So, it's um, called... These are microphones people want to listen to. Rainbow. Okay, so let me find the verse first of all. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I had I had the Logos Bible software, which I have the King James, but I can go to Bible Gateway, no problem. First, I want to go to the exact reference first, um, then. Genesis 9, 12 to 17. Okay. Genesis 9. So Bible Gateway. King's James. King's James. Yeah. So let's read from nine. Yeah. God spake to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, and I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle and every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth and I will establish my covenant with you neither shall I shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth and God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. 
and it shall come to pass. When I bring a cloud over the earth, and the bow shall be seen in the cloud, I will remember my covenant, which is, the be which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, then that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Um, maybe that's the way he remembers it, the mechanism behind it. I don't know. If you think about it, do we have a concept of God that God needs reminding by something or is he all knowledgeable? His knowledge must, is not limited. He must remember in some way or other, so maybe that's how he does it, I don't know. No, no, just thinking about it. Imagine God, to remember his name, he has to look at him. Would you say like he's all knowledgeable? God knows the present, past and the future. That's what we mean by a necessary perfect being. A perfect knowledge is not limited in time and space. He knows the past, future and the present. So he knows what's going to happen in the future. So he doesn't need to remember the past when, it, when, when he's about angry or something make, to destroy mankind again and he says, oh, I made a covenant only by looking at the rainbow. If he doesn't look at the rainbow, he doesn't remember. That is not a description of a perfect God. A perfect God has perfect knowledge. So whoever wrote these things, they didn't estimate God correctly and they wrote about God like this with an imperfect descriptions of God. So a scripture like this is not representing correct information about God. I'm not sure I see it that way. Just... just imagine, God to know your name, he has to look at you and remember your name. If he doesn't look at you, he can't remember you. Oh, what was the name? Would you say th this is how God is? God's knowledge is perfect. Perfect. Perfect knowledge means he doesn't forget anything. Is it the rainbow is the only way he can remember it? Maybe yeah. There's, maybe there's some other way he could draw it. No, no. When he looks at it, he remembers. God doesn't need remembering because he doesn't forget. Do you know why we need remembering? By something? Because we forget. For example, if I... If you told me your name, and then five years later, I look at you, and I'm thinking, what was the name? What was the name? So I have to some some clues. I have to look at something. Oh, speaker's corner, and that was it. It's because I've forgotten. But if I do not forget, I have a very good memory. When I look at you, I will know your name straight away. God doesn't forget anything, so He doesn't need remembering the covenant. Why would not God be conscious about? something that he doesn't forget about. Think about it. No, no, think about it. Do you have a concept of God in which God doesn't know everything he forgets? Um, I don't really understand that part of it very well, to be honest, but I, I, think, I think God's in control of it. Does he know everything? Does he know your name? Would you ever forget your name? Is it possible for God who is all knowledgeable to not know your name? It's impossible for God because impossible meaning it's impossible in his attribute of all knowingness not to know your name. So even if it's in the future, God will still know your name because he knows the future. He's not ignorant of the future. So God, he made a covenant and he needs to remember by something. Tells you this is not a perfect description of God. Any book which says that is not from God, at least that part. Yeah, he says, when I look at the rainbow, then I will remember. That I may remember. No, no, even a tool to remember. Did he forget? Then it's a rainbow as a tool? I don't know why he chose to use a rainbow. It's not about choosing. You see, if a being exists without any beginning, he exists with his attributes, because his attribute is not given by anyone else. Because he exists eternally with no it's beginning. God's attributes are eternal. So the attributes that he has, no one gave it to him. He inherently possesses those attributes. Those attributes would be eternal with him. So they will have no limitations. So if he has knowledge, there is no restriction in his knowledge. No one would restrict him in this knowledge. He will be always knowing. That is how the necessary being possesses those necessary qualities and attributes. Quran gives us this information. In fact, Quran even says, you know, that this nothing is hidden from his knowledge, not even a leaf falls, for example, that he's aware of it. 
or darkest night in the darkest place on the darkest and or whatever you know he's aware of the movement god is aware of all the things and he's not unaware because he's all knowledgeable so if a book say something about god like that you need to question it you need to say could this be from God? Because it doesn't make sense it's from God. It's not about understanding it. If, if a book gives you imperfect description of God, imperfect description, 